Good evening. Welcome to the August 10th, 2016 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, could you have a roll call, please? <coughs> Ms. Shoup? Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Okay, everybody here is voting members, right? Mm -hmm. so, so. Okay, great. Um, do I have a motion for approval of minutes of July 13th, 2016? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Yeah, if we take a pledge of allegiance, please. That's right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And the uh, first appeal is appeal number 2580. It's a miscellaneous appeal by uh, Jonathan Medore, 257 Payne Road. So this is map R40, parcel 15, River Representative. If you could state your name, address, and uh, relation to the process. Uh, Jonathan Medore, 257 Payne Road. Thank you. And if you'd like to explain what you're trying to accomplish, we'll, we'll go from there. Yep, well, I'm just trying to build a 10 by 10 storage shed on my property. Okay, and you're currently in the HPZ zone, is that correct? Yep. And we do have a letter from the no. planning, oh, yeah. planning board. I'll just read this into the record. Excerpt from the August 8th planning board minutes. Uh, Jonathan Medora requested an advisory opinion of a miscellaneous appeal of a non-conforming use application to the Board of Appeals for 257 Payne Road. So this is map R40, lot 15. Mr. Uh, Chase explained to the board that the applicant is seeking an advisory opinion to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the expansion and addition of a shed of a non-conforming use single-family residence in the HP district. Mr. Medora stated he is trying to put a shed on his property for storage. Mr. Wood asked why the shed is located in the front yard. Mr. Medora explained that there is a 75-foot setback from the stream. Mr. Mazur asked uh, f for a uh, vote of the board to see who was fa in favor of the request. The vote was unanimous. Mr. Mazur stated the board will make favorable recommendations to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And uh, so that's into the record. And let's go right into the requirements for the um, miscellaneous appeal. As I see this, this is pretty straightforward. The property was that you were zoned out of compliance when the the, uh, yes. the this board. Just if anybody doesn't remember, the, when the town changed the ordinance and the zoning in that area, he was already a resident, so he actually was zoned out of compliance, even though it had nothing really to do mm -hmm. with you. So it's to me fairly straightforward, but we'll walk through everything. Proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. If you'd like to state for the record what uh, your arguments are for each one of these, oh, that would yeah. be great. Okay. Uh, it will not infringe on any of those as it is a storage shed. And you said it was 10 by 10? 10, 10 by 10. 10 by 10. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Uh, it is on the front lawn, however, it is uh, past the required setback for the uh, road. You, a, you said that, I noticed in the planning board said there was a, there was a stream There's setback. a stream in the woods behind my house. And that's the 75-foot? The, uh, yep. Is that, there's an, any way to override that through this process, or is that required? It's it's required unless he gets a permit by rule from DEP to reduce that setback. Okay. And he yeah. chose not to do that because he was happy with the location. Okay, great, thank you. What, uh, is, the, what is the front yard setback there? Front yard in the HPZ, I think it's 25 feet by 
since he's a non conforming use as a resident i'm not really sure if that applies it's well beyond that anyway so the stream just for your information is over there look at the big screen is there a way to zoom up on that at all well i can but then i'm going to have to move around the screen if you can't don't worry about it i just well i can i'll do it for you thanks that's that's as big as i can get it and keep it all on the screen so okay. there's your there's your stream okay. and there's 75 foot setback to the shed location which is there Perfect. and the home is behind that right over you can't see it real well it's labeled right there oh yeah okay <laughs> Okay, the next one is uh, the pros use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing or uh, and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. It is on the front lawn and does not infringe on any traffic or driveway. And the pros use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection uh, than existing uses in the neighborhood. Yep, correct, it will not. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Well, it is not near any water. And the proposed use will be uh, compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Yep, it's only 10 by 10. And it's not in the shoreland zone. We've eliminated the stream protection zone that you own the property. Yep. And. Um, Proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Yeah. Really kind of relevant on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to open the public. Would anybody like to speak to this on public record? Any letters on this at all? Nope. I'll close the public hearing part of this meeting and come to the board for questions, comments, or a motion. I think it's pretty straightforward. I, I don't see real any issues with it. And I, 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 certainly don't see that it is going to change the character of the, of the neighborhood mm -hmm. or cause any traffic uh, issues or, or erosion. Okay. I have no comments to add. I'll make a motion to approve. That'd be great. Second. Uh, discussion on the motion to approve as requested. Is that correct? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Appeals appeal number 2581. It's a limited reduction of yard size appeal by Anthony Heeman. 27 Vesper Street, assessor's uh, map U1, parcel 20. Did I get your name properly? He's, he's not here. You don't look like Anthony. What's that? You don't look like Anthony. No, Anthony's not here. Yeah. But I am Walter Wilson from Design Company, right. representing Anthony Heeman. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. Would you like to state what we're trying to accomplish? We'll go from there. Um, so this house is located at 27 Vesper Street, and the applications for the limited reduction in yard size uh, is in the CDCR1 zone, the new Higgins Beach character-based zoning district. And um, the house previously got approval from the zoning board to put a new foundation on it and raise it up from an elevation of 12 to 14.1 feet. However, the existing building now and before the raising of the foundation uh, has a, uh, does not meet the minimum setbacks on the westerly sideline or the front sideline of the property. Um, <coughs> the new setbacks on the sideline are 8 feet and the front yard is 18 foot minimum. 
the second floor of this building has sidewalls that are only four foot ten inches high and with an 812 roof pitch and the building on the side walls is not high enough to put egress windows in the existing bedrooms on the second floor and also the stairway going up to the second floor is on the side of the house so as you go up to the stairs the headroom at the top of the step on the left side is only four foot ten inches high and on the right side six foot ten inches high so the lack of egress windows in the sidewall and the headroom of the stairway don't meet code. Uh, they um, have to be, um, um, in our application, make the sidewalls higher. Um, so we're proposing to take the roof off that section of the house and make the sidewall seven foot four inches high, uh, which will allow for egress windows to be placed on the sidewalls and also to increase the height so that the headroom of the stairs meets code going upstairs to the second floor. The building as it's constructed in this area is only, um, let me see, 19 foot by 28 feet in length, 19 foot being the width. And so there's not enough height with the roof pitch on it and the low knee walls to construct dormers on the side of the house that would meet the code of the uh, character district that were imposed because of the restrictions on the dormer sizes that you have to have. And so the only way of getting the egress windows up there is to increase the side walls and raise that section of the, of the house up. The existing building uh, is approximately 25 feet from ground to top of ridge in this section of the house. And with the proposal of the side wall increase and the roof uh, pitch increase, it would be about 29 feet. Uh, so it would be about a three and a half foot increase in overall height. And in the district, we're allowed to be 35 feet high, so it's well within that um, height restriction. Uh, basically the house right now is uh, classified as a one and a half story house and with this uh, change in the wall height it would be probably classified as a two story house and in the zone a house of two and a half stories high is permitted so we're underneath that limitation as well. Um, so what basically the application is for is that the required setback on the Wesley sideline of eight, eight feet due to the placement of the house where it is now, it's three foot two inches from the sideline at the front corner of the house. And as you go back, it gets further in from the sideline. But on that westerly sideline, we'd have to get a variance of four foot 10 inches um, for the placement of the house where it is now. And the front of the house required minimum setback for the two-story portion of the house is 18 feet. And right now it sits at 15 foot six feet from the front yard, so we need a front yard variance of two and a half feet. Now nothing in this uh, proposal is going to increase square footage on the lot. No, one's, no square footage increase on the building itself at all, other than changing the height of the second floor over this portion of the house. So that's basically what we're asking for is a couple side yard reduction variances. Uh, anything to add on this, Ms. Winston? Uh, so this was brought before us before. Pardon me? This was brought before us before. In Th this application wasn't brought before. What was brought before was a uh, application to raise the foundation up underneath the house, which they had, they had done. And were you involved with that? No, I was. Process? Okay. So uh, the reason I'm asking that question is because, it would, and I, I know you better than that, and I knew the answer, but I wanted to make sure on record. This isn't an after the fact proposal, a skirt around, because you're involved now after they right. found out there was a problem, right. as opposed to somebody coming in thinking they get to Well, I say after there. the problem. What they asked for before, the building's in the same location. They just asked to raise it up and put a foundation under it right. previously. And at that point, they hadn't even got into doing any changes or alterations to the house other than raising it up. So then they decided after that that they wanted to continue with Right, actually this spring and this summer. Okay. And they started doing some work on the house siding, some window changes and so forth. And then they found out through the building department that they couldn't put a dormer on it for egress windows without getting a variance. So here I am. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, Want to open up to anybody who wishes to speak on this issue? Close public hearing part of this. Come back to the board for discussions, comments. We'll go through the uh, criteria in a minute. 
standing up top. All right, so we're talking about a uh, limited reduction of yard size. Seems pretty straightforward again. And the question I had was regarding whether or not this was um, a sideways into something. No, no. And that's we, obviously we, not the we case. Stopped, we stopped work because, <coughs> as I said, they put an application in for the dormer. I couldn't approve it, which is the normal course of how we get to the, the appeals board. Perfect. If we can't approve something, we have to deny it, and then they can come with an appeal, and that's what they're doing now. Great. When, uh, when was that to be the last program? I don't know. It's, it's Walter, do you have to know how? It had to been a couple of years. It wasn't, it wasn't well, while I was. The here. foundation deal? Yeah. I've got it at, uh, let me see here. I know I got it someplace. Dun, 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 dun. Three or four years, I think. Yeah, it was something. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> Probably reading might buy it. 2010. April. Uh, 2010. Yeah, also six years. 2010, I believe. Okay, so, so they. A little bit, little bit further back. Time, they, time they, have just, they have just finally gotten to a point where they're ready to kind of fix the place up and make it. Exactly. Make it I guess their fir the first thing they had to do was get the foundation right. at the time. Right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, the application for the uh, limited reduction of yard size must demonstrate the following. The existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, although the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, the tax record has the houses being built in 1950. The requested re reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, yeah, the proposed alteration to allow the building to be made more compliant with the building codes and the character requirements of the zone and therefore more compliant and compatible with the area. And due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Yeah, the proposed alterations need to apply for this. Uh, the proposed alteration is needed to apply for this variance because the existing structure does not meet the setback requirements. And the alteration proposal is a vertical in nature and will not exceed the allowed building height or increase in existing lot coverage. And the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Yeah, the impacts and effects of the proposal will not be substantially different from or greater than those impacts and effects of a building which conforms. The building itself does not change in square footage and height, number of bedrooms or anything. It's just a vertical expansion. And the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlarged and expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact uh, application. And the things yeah. you were saying like were minor. Like I said, some work have been started, new siding, some of the windows on the first floor. Um, nothing to do with the... Nothing to do with the actual part that we're talking about with the Dharma. That's where the job was stopped until we came for a variance. Okay. And this seems pretty straightforward from just it's about fire and safety. So, uh, any board members with questions, comments, or a motion? Well, the only question I had is they, when they were raising it up, they just didn't think to look at it then as far as... At that point, no. Uh, at that point, their concern was, I guess, evidently, the condition of the foundation. They want to stabilize it. They wanted to raise it up to the new elevation. And at that point, it wasn't a consideration to do any extensive remodeling work on the house. They were just looking at the foundation coming up at that point. That's my understanding of it. It was also seven years ago, right? Why, why, wouldn't, have, why wouldn't that have come up when they got a permit to raise it up? If I may. I wouldn't get hung up on that. That that project was about putting in a new foundation. It had nothing to do with any remodeling inside the house. Completely separate, unique issue. We've had several, since I've been here, several variances where foundations needed to be replaced and in order to do that it would raise the structure more than a foot, which is sort of the limit. At that point they have to come in for a variance because it's a non-conforming structure because of the location of it on the lot. And so it's a foundation replacement. There was no plans, as Mr. Uh, uh, Wilson said, there, there was no plans at that time for a remodel. They weren't even looking at that. They were simply looking to get a new foundation in place. Two totally different projects. I, I would say that in, in light of the fact that this project is 
only going to bring the, the, front, the, the building more into compliance with, uh, with not just the area but with safety factors as well. Uh, I certainly have no issues with it. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. And a motion to approve as requested has been moved and second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Have a nice day. Yeah, I had my my question was when when they came in for the raising, we don't look at other things that could be not conforming or codes or anything. If the request is for a foundation to be yeah. placed, there's no reason to look at anything okay. else. It's a totally separate project. Okay. Okay. If they have no plans to remodel, why are we looking at anything? I understand. We're only looking at the foundation and where the building is on the property. Okay, the next appeal is appeal number 2582. It's a variance appeal by Elizabeth Schisler, 48 Bayview Avenue, Assessor's Map U1, Parcel 107. It seems like a, another fairly straightforward one. Mr. Fisher, good seeing you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions this evening representing Beth Schisler, who has joined us. She's here in case any questions come up. Um, as uh, the chairman has mentioned, it's fairly straightforward. We were before you on this very same project about four months ago, about four or five months ago. Uh, earlier this spring, we did receive a variance from the board at that point. The issue at that point was to raise, physically raise up the house, uh, replace its existing frost wall foundation because it is in a flood zone. It's in an erosion hazard area. We're going to be putting that on piles as is typically required in those areas now and then lowering the house back onto those piles and calling everything good. Uh, unfortunately, what happened after we received that variance and the contractor that Ms. Schisler had contracted with at that point um, started to get everything together for uh, uh, the beginning of the project and uh, that contractor suffered a debilitating injury that is, makes him no longer a contractor. So uh, at that point, Ms. Schisler then went to another contractor who said, certainly, I can take care of this. Uh, he took a look or they took a look at the house at that point and said, given the, you back up here a little bit, the house is fairly small. It's on a very small lot and it's a relatively small house on the lot and it's two stories currently. <coughs> the reason I mention that is that the contractor took a look at this and said, this is the new contractor, and said, uh, I am not at all comfortable from a safety perspective raising this house up as high as it needs to be raised up in order to be able to actually put piles underneath it as opposed to just doing a, a you know, frost wall foundation, for instance. Uh, so it's predominantly a, a safety issue uh, because he said, I'm not going to put any crews underneath there when, uh, when that house is up there primarily because of its proximity to the water and to the winds that come off the ocean. Uh, he was just a little unnerved, probably rightly so, about a two-story house that would be elevated up almost 11 feet uh, above grade with nothing supporting it other than the, uh, the four pillars uh, and having a wind come along, and the house is going to be up there for several weeks, uh, and then having a wind coming along and doing what we wouldn't want to have a house like that happen, or happen to it. Uh, and many of those houses typically, by the way, are um, further enhanced by, as far as structural safety is concerned when they're up there by temporary sort of flying buttresses, as it were. On this particular project, we don't have the room to be able to do that. Uh, there's very few, uh, very little distance between the, uh, the side line and where the house is. And would then the other houses you, on the other line. Would you explain a flying buttress, please? Uh, yes. It's actually, when you've got a, uh, a house that's to be elevated in a situation like this, it's typically going hydraulically lifted on four, four or more posts that are created. Uh, you can imagine uh, they typically they unbolt the house uh, from the foundation and then they then start, to, they put uh, beams underneath it. They'll knock holes in that foundation in order to be able to lift it up. And then they go inside the foundation if there is one. Otherwise, they do it on the outside and they build these pillars very, very slowly so that the house is actually jacked up in increments to get to that point. And that can take hours or uh, almost a day depending on the size of the house and how high it has to get. Once it gets up to that level, if it's in an area that is not susceptible to winds or other factors that might actually cause it to sway, 
then there's typically no issue and it's left that way. In many cases when it's a house like that in, it, in that condition where it's raised is actually uh, high enough to be potentially susceptible from a safety perspective to winds that could actually alter it, either shift it off of its center uh, or literally blow it over. I've seen that happen once. Uh, so what happens is they attach um, temporary, either usually wooden but sometimes steel buttresses that will actually brace the side of the house and come out at an angle to be able to actually put pillared supports, uh, diagonal supports against that house to prevent that sway from actually happening. Usually when we're dealing with houses of this course, they're either smaller houses on larger lots where we've got plenty of room to be able to do that, or they're fairly substantial houses, which also again has a, a fair amount of property around them, so that uh, they're either, their size of the house is either not gonna make it sway, no matter what the wind conditions are, or it's again buttressed for safety. In this particular case, the contractor said, I've got no room to do that. I would call your attention to the plan at the back of your packet showing that there's very, very little room on this property. It's, it's under 3,000, the property is under 3,000 square feet. The house is obviously a lot smaller than that. Um, so the contractor had said, given the size of the, or the, the height that we'd have to go, uh, the danger of uh, putting anybody underneath there, uh, and the time frames that are involved, meaning we're getting into, if there is a hurricane season, it would typically be the, uh, the autumn in this area, and he just didn't want to go there. So I spoke with Ms. Schistler about that. She's like, now what do I do? Because I've got a house that's already rented for me. For, she wants to be able to build this house to be able to move back into it by the beginning of the season next year, the summer season next year. So she's already got another house ready to go next month. And this caused a bit of a panic because when their original contractor broke his net, broke, uh, had the problem, then um, the new contractor said, I'd be happy to do it, but here are my conditions in order to be able to make this happen. So we're instead of now raising the house or attempting to raise the house, uh, we're going to tear it down and rebuild it. You can see pursuant to the plans that are in your packet, the rebuilding is going to be in the same footprint as the existing house. So <clears throat> other than the fact that we're literally tearing it down and rebuilding it in the same footprint, there will be no change to the variance that we are to the house from the variance that was already granted several months ago. Given that, I'm happy to answer any questions or address any comments. Anything to add on this one? I think we just received a permit by rule on that as well. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Anything else to add? Uh, no, other than what I said in my comments. It's basically, I mean, all of the same arguments, all of the same constraints are still in play as the original uh, approval. Um, for the elevation and remodel that you approved earlier this year. The only difference is um, they've come back um, and just uh, want to replace the structure instead of remodel it. The same argument. The same. Okay. So, but I move that the board is comfortable with is con to, to accept the previous <coughs> comments from the, the previous vote and then attach this given that there's no major change other than whether it's new or, or existing, would you be comfortable with that? Is it the exact same footprint? The only difference to the footprint is one stair tread that goes out into the driveway. Yeah. That's it. Everything else is the same. And that's because it's raised up a little bit more? Yes. So can I get a motion on the board for that? Yes, I move to that uh, we accept the uh, previous findings on the uh, application prior. Second. Okay, and any discussion on that piece of the motion? All in favor? Can I okay. now continue with that based on that assumption? Good. Thank you for your time. Um, we have one letter on this. Any phone calls or anything? Nope. Okay. I open the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this issue? Seeing none, I'll close public part. This is a letter from uh, Ted and Linda Hall. My property is located at 44 Bayview. We wish to support the variance requested by Beth Schischler, 48 Bayview Avenue, Scarborough. The drawing that Kaplan Thompson uh, submitted to the zoning board are as Ms. Schistler described to us. The, they, the drawings show that the renovated home will maintain the cottage-like appearance of Higgins Beach and the neighboring properties. We look forward to seeing the finished home sincerely. Headland the Hall and their address is 48 Bayview Avenue, I think one house away, two houses away, I guess that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Let's go through the, uh, the criteria just quickly. Again, this is just for 
record's sake. Uh, the land in question cannot use a, uh, yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. Reasonable return does not mean maximum return, et cetera. And we're basically saying that the same applies in each of these, and that's all we'll deal with that if that's okay with you. That's correct. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property. This criterion applies to property, not people, and to common condition not shared by the neighborhood. <coughs> the tie the same. The grant variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. It will not. And the hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner of the property. Everything, the lot in the house existed long before zoning was enacted. And that is that part. So uh, any comments, questions from the board or a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Just remember to invite us to, just remember to, invite us to the party. <laughs> Appeal number 2584, it's a limited reduction of yard size good by Stephen and Martha Hammond. 53 Tall Pines Road, this is map U9, parcel 3. Right. So take a stand, state your name and address, we'll go from there. Steve Hammond. Martha Hammond. 53 Tall Pines Road. Thank you. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish? We'd like to uh, add um, a small structure on the side of our garage so that we can store uh, snow removal equipment and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, because our lot is um, has three road frontages wrapping around it, uh, we've got a 40-foot setback on all the sides, and um, so we'd like to get a three-and-a-half-foot reduction on one side to build this structure. Very good. Um, any letters or phone calls on this? No. And any cabinets? No, it's a it's a pretty much a straightforward limited reduction of yard size criteria similar to the one we heard uh, a few minutes ago. Same criteria for review. Um, the house is eligible uh, due to the age of it, um, so it's the right it's the right vehicle, I guess, for this request. Okay. Saw the drawing; it looks looks appropriate. So why don't we jump right in? Uh, what I'll do is I'll read in the question. If you could answer it best you can, that'd be great. Okay. Sure. Um, Okay. The existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, of the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, there's a building permit in your packet from 1977. Uh, the request for reduction is reasonably necessary to submit the owner of the, or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Could you expand on the, the comment that you made on that um, a bit? That would be helpful. My um, my garage is just a tad smaller than a normal garage, and in order to keep a snow blower and and, and I have no basement in my house, so to keep a table saw in the garage, it means I can't put my car in the garage. So I'm looking for for a place to uh, to store those those items so I can garage my my both my cars. Do you know the size of your garage currently, by any chance? It's um it's on the plan. It's uh, 24 by 22. 
So the back side is the short side. It's, it's shallower than shallow kind enough. of a typical garage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, due to the unique features of the lot or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion and enlargement of a new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. If I if I did um, if I did store my snowblower someplace else, it meant that it wouldn't be adjacent to the driveway, and I'd have to make a path to wherever it is to get it to the driveway to use it. Uh, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, of new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. I think it's the um, last page in your packet. There's um, six houses of, that are close to my house that all have oversized garages, and um, I did neglect one, and that's my only abutter. Um, has got the same thing on their garage that I'm asking for. Would you mind if I <coughs> passed out one picture? Feel free. This is my only abutter in my backyard, and uh, what she's got on the side of her garage is substantially what I'm looking for for mine. Thank you. You haven't, you, met, you haven't commenced, uh, excuse me, commenced construction or enlargement expansion at this point. That's right. Yeah. Okay, um, let me open up the public. Anybody wish to speak to this from the public? If you know, I'll close the public part of the meeting. Come back to the board for questions, comments, or a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. No second. Discussion on the motion. I would like to say that uh, I think you've done a great job with the design, making it match what the others look like, and, and so it, it really, it's going to, I think, uh, be a nice addition there. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor? That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Hopefully you won't have to use that snowblower this year. We can <laughs> El Nino is our best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Next appeal, it's appeal number 2583. It's a special exception permit application request by Christopher Griffith, 210 Payne Road, Assessor's Map R41, Parcel 10. I missed Mrs. Hammond. You don't, you don't have to stay to be polite. <laughs> Some people do that. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> have a good night. You're welcome Tuesday, but. <laughs> Hi, if you could state your name. Hi, I'm Chris Griffith, 210 Payne Road. Okay. Scarborough. And uh, Mr. Griffith, could you explain what you'd like to accomplish? We'll go from there. Um, I would like to get permitted um, for a home occupation for the purpose of operating an art gallery and a real estate office, normal business hours, and by appointment. Very good. Um, any questions? Um, no, the only comment that I really have is that it's it, it's a little unusual to have two separate kind of uses in a home occupation, but I don't see anything in the ordinance that prohibits that. I mean, you could certainly have a, a combination of 
uh, home occupation uses as long as one is in an auto body repair shop, which is prohibited. I think th you probably do it. It's unusual, but I uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if the board has any questions regarding that. But I, I looked in the ordinance. I see no prohibition on it. I think the easy way I was going to suggest that we divide the question uh, if the board's comfortable with that, and that way we can take them separately uh, under the same appeal. But that way we're not dealing with two scattered points at the same time. Is everybody comfortable with that? Okay, so I'll move to divide the question. For a second. <coughs> a second on dividing the question. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Who seconded that? Uh, Mr. Stark. Before you start, Mr. Chairman, I should add to you um, that Mr. Griffith had an in home office permit prior to this, which he uh, put a copy in his packet. Um, and he came in on his own accord to say he wasn't sure that what he was doing now was in keeping with the in-home office, so he's actually going to the next step in the progression, which is get a special exception home occupation permit. Okay. And his previous one was? I'll let him explain that. Great. So if, if you'd like to explain what your previous uh, home occupation was. Sure. Um, in, I think it was, I bought the home in August of 2000, and two days after applied for an in-home in office permit and was granted it. I did recruiting just on the telephone and on the computer and recruited for main companies. And over the years, um, it became automated and it was, you know, like a travel agency. The recruiting business went away. So I studied for a real estate license and, well, I did, I ha I've had the um, in-home office permit for 16 years and then I went and uh, got my real estate license and worked for a big firm and once you have you know you you earn enough time and you get enough credentials you can go off on your own um, so I did real estate out of my house and I realized that when a client comes to my house to park their car and we go off looking for stuff I was breaking the in-home office uh, requirements that no clients can come to my house so that's pretty much what started all of this was I it's 99.9% .9 of the real estate business is done on the phone and on the computer and it's a very rare occasion that somebody will drop off paperwork because most of that's docu-signed electronically but um, they'll be driving by and they'll want to drop something off or pick something up or park a car we meet at my house and go off and look at properties. But that was not in compliance with the in-home office and that's when I started the process and came downtown and got the paperwork and saw what was involved in it. Yeah, it's impressive actually. And obviously you did put your time in and got your credentials because most people wouldn't have noticed or cared. Okay, uh, so let's jump right into the uh, special exception. And this is strictly on the part of the real estate uh, office and I think we need to define it in a second section, but we'll get to that. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, uh, unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. If you'd like to just read into the record what you've already said. Okay, right here. and I'll just read in the real estate component of it at this time. Yes, thank you. Um, I anticipate two to four, or in this case, maybe one to two real estate clients a week slash month. It will be very minimal. Um, oh no, wait a minute. Let me, I'm on the wrong question. I'm sorry. Um, the ho my house is served by a three bedroom septic system and any occupant load generated by this real estate home occupation would be minimal at best. And um, due to the fact that I anticipate one to two real estate uh, clients per week, um, the design flow by this type of home occupation is incidental and negligible. There would also be no unsanitary or unhealthful conditions regarding emissions into the air or water either. Okay. And the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Okay. Um, I anticipate, I'm going to say one to two real estate clients per week or slash month, very minimal. Um, the current parking space can easily accommodate um, these re retail clients. 
I, these real estate clients, um, when they come over, I have a very large uh, parking area. <coughs> I have two curb cuts out onto the Payne Road, so there's plenty of place to park to turn around. No one would ever have to back out onto the Payne Road. Very good. And Suppose you should not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. The proposed use will not create any public safety problems and therefore not create or require a greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than what currently exists. And the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion and have an adverse effect on the water supplies? No. The, um, there's absolutely no effect on sedimentation, erosion, or water supplies. And the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. No changes in any structures at 210 Payne Road. And you're not in the shoreland zone? No. And then we'll jump into the uh, section for home occupation. Did you want to finish, Chief? Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss something? Right here. Oh, the applicant, you own the property? You I do. You really own the property. And you have the technical and financial ability to meet any of the standards, right? I do. Okay. And the proposed use will be compatible with existing use of the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. I agree. I mean, it it's just standard. Yeah. Really. One or two people, maybe a week, on, on the real estate, and if that, um, no impact. Okay. okay, and we'll jump over to home occupation standards. Uh, the occupation, the occupation, occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal res building and within buildings accessory thereto. Yes. In this case, it'll be in the on the first section it's in the main house, correct? Yes. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yes. No more than one person who is a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. Just me. Now, but that's all I... Just me, yes. Okay. It w would allow one more person. Right. Uh, are you looking for signage? Probably. Okay, you can uh, be allowed a two-by-three sign. Right, so six square feet. Six feet. Um, and it would need to meet the sign regulations, which... Which I... Zoning board. The, uh, I already have my application. Uh, there should be no exterior display, no uh, exterior storage of materials and other exterior indication of the home occupation or variance, uh, I'm sorry, variation from the residential character of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. Correct. No outside storage. Uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Not at all. And the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Not at all. And in addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirement of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided. And it seems like a yes, adequate is, is there. And um, it's not using any more than 20% of the dwelling unit. I'm, I'm assuming you're just using your kitchen table or you have, a, you have an yeah. office that you Yeah, that in-home office, it's 10.2% um, of the finished space in the house. And uh, the unfinished attic and basis, let's see, it's not opened. Uh, home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. We'll come back to that. Uh, fishermen, lobstermen, shellfish, nothing there. Motor vehicle repairs, nothing there. Okay. Open up any letters or comments on this? No, it's not. Right. Open the public hearing. Nobody's here, but I'll open the public hearing to anybody that would like to speak to it. Nobody's running in, so I'll close the public hearing part of this meeting. Come back to the board for questions, comments, uh, or a motion on the first um, part of this question. We'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All in favor? That's unanimous. So let's take the second part of this motion. Thank you. So this is on the real estate part. That was on the real estate part. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the. Uh, the other, which basically we're going to go back right over the same thing. Right, I got it now. Okay. And did you understand what I did by by breaking that in two? Yes. Okay. So the next part is uh, the. Well, I want to let you use your own words. 
what are you trying to accomplish on the second part of the, the approval? Well, I guess the words would, would be an art <coughs> gallery, um, to, a home occupation for the purpose of operating an, an art ga gallery during normal business hours and by appointment. Um, I've been flying for almost 35 years, uh, and I take aerial photographs uh, out of the plane I, to cash flow the plane. I uh, take a lot of construction progress, a lot of site uh, selection for the commercial aspects. And while I'm up there, it's really pretty, and I take pictures. And then I sell those pictures on the beach, four or five art shows, Old Orchard, down to a gun quit during the summer. I didn't even think about the retail aspect <coughs> until I started to read the application and saw there's a retail component. And I thought, um, what a great opportunity to see if um, I could sell some artwork when I'm there. It wouldn't be all the time because I do work. Um, so I, I thought I would also apply for retail sales in my accessory building. I have a big, I have two, two garages. One's attached to the house and one is not. And I would just take the show 10 by 10 tent that you set up at these art shows and just set it up inside one bay of the garage when I'm there and open up one door and see what happens. I mean, Payne Road in the summertime is uh, a busy place. You know, it's, I don't think it's an unsafe place. It's a, it's a busy place. And everybody's putting up the road to go to the beach. And I thought maybe I would see how, how that would work. And I'd like to do that. Okay. I'd like to just start on the performance standards of the home occupation first and then go back to the others if that's okay with the board. And uh, kind of throw a curve at you. But I want to yeah. get that section that you're talking about on the record first. Uh, the occupation and profession shall be carried out wholly within the principal building or within the building accessory there too. Correct. And that would be in the garage bay. Correct. And would be year round or just seasonal? Well, I'd, I'd like to go for year round because um, I do get some people in the in Christmas time. Is that always a busy time? People call on the phone, and that's another. Well, we'll, we'll go through your questions and then I'll. Uh, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yes. And no more than one person in the resident of the dwelling shall uh, be employed in the home occupation. Correct. Just okay. myself. Okay. And or, or just to clarify that, that even though because we, we divided the question, but that would apply one person would be for both. For both. Yeah, you couldn't have one. You couldn't have one for one and then agree. one for another. Okay. Totally agree. Uh, Exterior signage shall be uh, permitted with accordance to the home occupation. That would again be the same thing. That six foot square sign could only be, uh, it would need to include both items. Right. It couldn't have two separate six foot signs. Well, what I was, I can, can I ask you questions about Absolutely. the sign now or later? Well, you can ask anytime you like. Well, I, I was thinking about that. And, you know, during the peak summer months, maybe I put up just an aerial photo sign, and then when the season goes back to normal in town, I put up the real estate sign. I'd have to apply for two sign permits. Do you know what I mean? Would there be no way to combine the two businesses onto one sign? Realtor and aerial photographist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it would be kind of neater and cleaner to do it that way. I understand what you're saying, but yeah, you'd only be allowed one sign. Could you rotate those? Could you have permission for the verbiage of two different signs and rotate them in and out as you need to for your season? I think is your question. Right, and with the permission of of the code office, obviously. I mean, it, and then I was reading where I have to have the. 210 Payne Road, the address on there, and when you put all this on there, it eats. You know, I mean, it's six square feet. So that there's, a, there's always the business districts. <laughs> I know, I know, and if it works, believe me, I, I'll I be in the business it's a good district. Question. It's a fair question, and I I've never actually had that come up. So um, I I suppose one way to approach it would be for the board to place that condition on the special exception permit, that two signs may be used, but only one at a time, two different, two distinct, distinctly different signs. 
one for each business, but only used one at a time in in the same. Would you put them in the same place? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So like a a, a, a yard arm type sign, maybe on yeah, the yeah. lawn, and right. just interchange the signs as as you need to. Anybody, right. Does anybody remember have a problem with that? I, I certainly don't. I no issue. Will. No. Yeah, does that sound fair? I, I, it's a new one for me, so I'm we're treading new ground here. I don't think it's an unreasonable. That's good to me. Thank you. Okay. Or you could put one business on one side and the other one on the other. Or get an electronic reader board and have it rotate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and put uh, another uh, sign in my neighbor's <laughs> driveway. It says, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting into dangerous territory. Yeah, I think yeah. Into really oh, dangerous. God. Yeah. Um, yeah. truck and a billboard. Sorry. You know, a mixture of uh, one sign for one, one sign for the other, and maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll get my sign guy to make one for both of them. So, you know, but as never as more than one at a time, never more than six square feet. As long as they're approved by code enforcement, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, the, uh, there should be no exterior <coughs> display nor exterior storage of materials, so you wouldn't be hanging pictures on the nope. wall outside the building. Nothing or. outside. <coughs> uh, no nuisance shall be generated by, uh, but not necessarily limited to offensive noise. Uh, vibration, smoke, dust odors. <coughs> Nothing. No. Uh, traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the neighborhood. That would be in combination for the board thought with the other approval that we just granted. So when you take that into consideration, you'd like to take it. Yeah, I was I was anticipating, you know, if let's say I got <coughs> four retail customers on a Saturday or something like that. Um, you know, I have parking at least for six cars besides my own personal cars. Um, and again, there's two curb cuts to the pain road. I don't see it impairing traffic whatsoever. It's a, it's a you know, he's got, that's the size of the parking area. Um, it's on a part of the pain road where it, the, the sight lines are straight. It's, it's not turned at all. I, I, mean, I looked at it, it looked like the ideal situation. You've got a good okay. time. I didn't see any problem with that, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, traffic generated by such home occupation. Shall, I'm sorry, I just read that one. In addition to off street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the occupation may attract during peak operating hours. You probably answered that already. Yes, oh, plenty of parking. Uh, so in com combination with the first section, which would be the 10% the you had mentioned, uh, not more than 20% of the dwelling unit uh, floor area provided that the uh, purposes for this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. And so you're talking about half a garage bay. So um, th yeah, the, the total, it's a 22 by 30 foot garage, so 660 square feet. And I said 10 by 12, so if something goes outside the 10 by 10 tent, and that's only 18% of the garage. And those numbers drive. The limitations for retail sales, I think, is 400 square feet. Right. Okay. Yeah, actually, it comes down a little bit further. So you'd need to limit that to 400 square feet, which would be a little bit less than that. Um, than the 660. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He's only talking about 120 retail square feet. In the oh, whole okay, garage. You Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, my occupation may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. The total square feet is limited to 400 square feet. Sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or pr processed on the premises, uh, and seafood mm -hmm. caught, blah, and on and on. And I would argue that photography would meet that standard unless anybody has a problem with that. But, yeah. You know, this, I'd like to ask one question about that. Yes. Uh, you said art gallery. Are you referring to your photographs? Yes. You're not selling anybody else's, right? No. No. And everything, I and everything you will be selling, you will be putting together in your home. Yes. Right. And nobody else's. I brought some examples if you want to see them. But this DBA of my company is called Great Moose Aerial Art. So I figured art gallery. You know. Wouldn't mind seeing a picture of you that one. Bring them up to you? Sure. Not that it matters, but you know, from I brought you on. Blank point of view, but. Are you just a copy for each of us? <laughs> Depends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is taking the page, oh, and that one's kind of point. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Microphone is a real estate agent. 
Thanks, you really nice work. I'm actually a pilot too, so I, was, I, I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, cool. Yeah. What do you yeah. find? I, ha I have a luscum. Really? Yeah. Wow. I put around in a luscum. Quite the conversation piece. Yeah. <laughs> 1940. <coughs> it's a 2009. Great story. Sidebar on that one. Interesting after. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that comes back to the uh, special exception. And the proposed use will not create unsafe, uh, unsanitary, and unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Yeah, it's in the garage and, um, you know, not in the house, so there won't be any load on the septic system, you know, or air, or water, any of that. And the proposed use will not uh, create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity? No. And a lot of these repeat. So. Yeah. Uh, the proposed use will, be, it will not create public safety problems, which will be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection. No additional public safety, you know, um, resources are required. And proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. No changes on any structure at all. And you're not in the shoreland zone, uh, you no. own property, and you have the financial ability to, to meet any requirements. <coughs> and it's compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Yeah, you know, normal uh, hours of operation by appointment only, plenty of parking space, um, talk to all the neighbors, they all wished me good luck and, you know, had no problems. Thank you. By appointment only, can you elaborate on that? Are you talking 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night? Are you talking? No, we, you know, like in the summertime when it's light out, maybe seven, but maybe not, maybe six, you know what I mean? Um, but no, no 10 or 11 o'clock, you know, just normal Saturday af afternoons, Saturday mornings, but I'd say is seven. Do you do you stipulate by time? I don't think there's any reason to in something as small as this personally. But and, and you, you mentioned that you want to use this year round. Do you have a heat system in your garage? I do. The garage is is, is actually finished. So it's a nice little yeah. workshop and, and it is heated. Perfect. I have a uh, question. Do you print the do you print the photos digitally? I do. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like you have a you have a dark room and uh, mixing with chemicals and the. No. <laughs> okay. No, not anymore. Okay. No, it's all digital. Great. Other questions, comments, or a motion? Move to approve. Uh, Second. Question. It's approved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, it's just to just to clarify that. Um, it's even though we broke the question in two, it fits as one, one sign, uh, <coughs> but you can rotate it out uh, as long as it's approved by the code enforcement office, and one employee would be the max for combination. combination. Okay. I did like Mr. Longstaff's comment about a reversible sign. You never know. They might be able to do it better for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, one now one that you've given me the flexibility, I can put black bear sign works to work and. Del Bo, I said hi. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, all in favor? That's unanimous. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Way to keep the plane? Biddeford. Okay. Mark is going to take those home. <laughs>
a guy I know, and we landed on the water. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's a rush. Yeah. I guess mm. before I was big time. Uh, old time. Uh, yeah. Nope, nope, nope. nope. Okay. He's a new bear, so. Next appeal is 2585. It's a variance appeal by Charles and uh, Eliza. Is it Eliza Lee? Uh, 47 Winslow Homer Road, Assessor's Map U19, Parcel 42. And if you could state your name and uh, <coughs> what you're trying to accomplish, we'll go from there. Sure. My name is Trevor Watson. I'm acting as the uh, owner's agent for Charlie and Eliza Lee uh, in this um, practical difficulty variance application. And this is not a variance appeal, then. This is a practical difficulty. Yes. It's still a variance, but it's a practical difficulty. Okay. I just, uh, to me, there's a mental shift there. That's one. Of <laughs> First and foremost, Karen, are you okay? Yes. Okay. I was getting worried about you. Yeah. <laughs> she actually told us we had to, to, uh, to fill totally up prepared. I thought I had more time. And I did too, Trevor. <laughs> it totally caught me off guard. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> So why don't you go ahead and explain what you'd like to accomplish, and we'll go from there. Absolutely. So we are, uh, 47 Winslow Homer Road is a <coughs> non-conforming <coughs> lot of record. Uh, it does not meet minimum square footage requirements. Uh, additionally, the existing structure exists burdening the side yard and front yard setback as well as uh, an abutters property. Um, existing structures uh, overlap the the property lines, so we are asking that the um, we are approved to tear down all existing structures and reduce the front yard setback by 12 feet to unburden the side yard uh, and abutters properties and focus the burden on the front yard setback, which based on the unique interaction between the travel way and the existing road width requirements, uh, it's a unique situation that can handle this 12-foot reduction in front yard setback. Okay. So this entire building will come down, basically? Yes. All, all structures on property will come down, and we would, we're proposing to rebuild a similar size structure. Uh, 2,800 square feet versus uh, uh, 2,700 square feet, uh, more centered on the property uh, while still burdening the front yard setback with this 12-foot reduction. The, um, the goal is to make a non-conforming property less non-conforming while also continuing to respect uh, privacy which currently exists between all the neighbors because as you all know um, properties in this area don't all necessarily conform to modern zoning because they were you know the, the properties were uh, created uh, such a long time ago um, so maintaining privacy the expectation of privacy the existing yard uh, grass yard and the existing mature trees, which are completely reasonable to expect uh, to have in in a residential zone such as this, and basically because the road is 14 feet wide versus the modern zoning requirement of 66 feet, and how that relationship exists, uh, we would we would ask for 12 feet to burden that, um, maintaining a, a you know plus or minus a 50 foot perceived front yard setback, um, but unburden everything else. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, setbacks, <coughs> are, the current setbacks on this property, how does that lay out? You can't, can it sit, is there an envelope here big enough to? Yeah, so the, the dark, the dark hashed zones uh, right here and here, uh, mm -hmm. which I, I don't have a pointer, but this is the existing structure, which is burdening the neighbor's property, uh, crossing the property line, as well as existing in the side yard setback. And this portion, 
which is burdening the front yard setback existing within the front yard setback. Uh, and then we would propose to uh, sort of reposition a new structure within, within the legal building envelope, so no longer burdening the neighbor, uh, maintaining the, the privacy and the, the, the lawn, which you can see in the aerial photograph, as well as the mature trees, and then just burdening, slightly increasing the, uh, the existing burden to the front yard setback. So you're, <coughs> you're basically kicking it over to the, to the right and sort of squaring it off to the road? Yeah, we're, we're more squaring it off. The, there's an existing wing, which is this portion here. The rest of it, we're just kind of rotating the structure. So we're, try, we're, we're trying to maintain the existing impact. Is this on septic or on a, on a sewer? It's on a sewer. And the number of bedrooms that are currently there now, how many? Uh, there's four bedrooms now, which will remain. And the proposed use is four also? On yes. Oh. Okay. okay, so let's just jump right into the... Uh, You don't have to read all this in, but we'll. Uh... So I think I've uh, I think I've described the project. Yes, you have. Okay, so the exact dimensional <coughs> requirement would be a 12 foot reduction in the front yard setback from uh, 40 feet to 28 feet. Anything to add to this at all? <clears throat> Nothing in addition to my my comments. Again, I think the I think the uh, focus here is going to be on number four uh, regarding feasible no feasible alternatives. Um, this question was asked and answered. Is there a buildable envelope? If there is. So the purpose of the photographs is to show that although I do not have a structural engineer's review, uh, I, th I think it's um, easy to ascertain that this is basically a seasonal camp that's existed for many years with deferred maintenance. It was never built for year-round consideration. It was never built to today's modern construction practices. Uh, the size of the members is undersized. The spacing of the members is exceeding uh, traditional, you know, 16 inch on center spacing. And additionally, uh, although the photographs don't show it, the majority of the structure, uh, first and second floor with the exclusion of the attic, is finished over time. They basically just finished the walls. And so uh, any attempt to work within the existing structure would require the removal of existing finishes to then understand exactly what's going on, although we can assume that it's undersized. Uh, we then determine that the structure is undersized and we have to deal with it. So it's, it's basically removing existing finish to then rebuild the structure to then reapply uh, modern finishes. So it becomes cumbersome, it becomes onerous, it becomes uh, financially unfeasible versus, you, you know, versus uh, basically just raising the entire structure to uh, start fresh. So uh, the existing buildings and structure were the lot uh, for limited reduction of yard sizes requested in the rate section. I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, page here, am I on? Is that... Um that big cluff that we see right behind the, the existing house, is that a single tree or is that multiple? 
That's a single uh, fully mature tree. It's like an elm or an oak or so, something along those lines, not an arborist, so I apologize. Okay, and it's, the structure can't be moved back any closer to that, or is it just can't be moved back far enough to do? It can't be moved back far enough. I mean, the, the, the argument is yes, uh, well, the, my argument is that it cannot be moved without significantly impacting the expectation of privacy to the abutters, which exists right here. I don't have a survey, but I, they are existing, uh, the, those structures exist very close to the property line, uh, although I don't have a, a survey of their property, so I'm not going to speak to that. But um, uh, it cannot be moved without maintaining the, the privacy, the yard, and the mature trees, which everybody is sort of respectful of uh, at the time of purchase. Um, so if we want to discuss rebuilding a structure within the legal envelope, we're going to have to have a conversation about a reduction in privacy, a reduction in yard size, and a reduction in mature trees, trees which um, is completely, uh, it's expected and completely reasonable to expect those to exist in this type of residential area, in my opinion. Yeah, that's, I, I'm not, my question is more that can you move that structure back a little bit further, even, even, even though you may not be able to keep, put the entire structure within the envelope and still maintain the, the large trees? We could move it back and trim the large trees, yes. But we, I mean, if we move it back to 12 feet, we would probably have to remove the large trees. I'm a little bit concerned because we don't have uh, one of the requirements, which is a, uh, a plot plan of some type. Yeah, you got it right there. Where is it? The first page. It's the site plan right here. What have you done? Right there. That is the site plan. Okay. Um, I guess I'm confused as to why that can't sit on the... Uh, I, I get the concept. I guess I'm not confident of the reality. Uh, I'm trying to imagine that turning and why it... Is, this, is there a dashed line there? Is it the dashed line on this picture intentional? Is, it, is, that, is there a dashed line right there that I'm... Yeah. That's the buildable envelope. Okay. That, that, that's the building window. Okay, that helps. Okay, so by turning it and then adding 12 feet, right, that makes more sense to me. If the board's looking at the picture right beside the drawing, it actually gives you a better perspective than I think the drawing does. If you turn that building parallel, is it running par uh, parallel with the... It looks like it's going to be running parallel or down close to parallel with uh, the setback, uh, with the uh, front setback, is that correct? Yes. The, f the front of the building will be... Uh, the proposed is to have the front of the building parallel with the front yard setback. And is the footprint the same size as the current footprint? Uh, plus or minus, we're talking about uh, 2,700 square feet total building versus 2,800 square feet. So what yes. What about the footprint? Yes. It's for all intents and purposes. Uh, I believe the existing footprint is plus or minus uh, uh, 1,400 square feet, and the proposed footprint is plus or minus uh, 1,600 square feet. So it's a, it's a, it is a slight increase in footprint. Uh, however, the existing structure is more a full two-story structure, where the proposed structure is more in keeping with the neighborhood where the second story exists within roof lines. So by, that, by, by the very nature of that, it's going to be a, a slight reduction in, uh, it's going to be an increase in first floor and a, and a reduction in second floor footprint. And the, the, it's probably right here, but it would be easier for me to ask. Uh, the current depth of the, prop, the unit itself versus the new depth of the, the new property. Do you know what that is offhand? Uh, I'm sorry, do you mean the in, sort of the encroachment into the front yard setback? No, I mean, the, uh, if you're looking at the building uh, from, from the main road there. Oh, yeah, it, it doesn't show it, but we are, the, the, this proposed depth, the, this proposed um, yeah, well, yeah, from the intrusion into the legal building envelope is uh, plus or minus the same. So it's it's uh, 
I guess I'm still trying to, what I'm trying to try and imagine is I'm trying to take the new piece and set it in this picture uh, to, to justify, I'm trying to justify your argument. Right, so. That the trees, that there's enough of a reason. Right, so the, the, the existing, I mean, uh, this is not, I mean, I can draw it. That's okay. No, you just, uh, I think I understand what you're talking about. I think it's, a, it's about this corner here is about the same uh, versus the existing. So this this area this area here, I mean we, we've got a we've got a slight overage here, but closer to the tree, we're maintaining I I proximity. Is that is that your question? I think so. I, and maybe you can help me. Um, some step. Where is the the side down up here? Is that is this the building? Where is the building envelope specifically? Okay. Really see that. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got a question. It's easier to see it. But here's the envelope. Yeah, the rear envelope is okay. Thank you. So, so from a practical point of view, you could go back relatively easily, but the cost of that would be loss of habitat, lots of trees. Exactly. The, the cost of that would be uh, closer proximity to the abutters to the rear, uh, loss of tree, loss of mature trees. The only reason why I mention mature, mature trees is because it speaks to privacy and an expectation of, and then a loss of lawn. Thank you. Is, yes. is the front of the property sloped down yes. towards the road? Yeah, uh, it's a significant slope, and uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure if we'll be we'll we'll actually be able to achieve the 12 foot that I'm asking for. Uh, we don't know exactly, so I went with the absolute maximum, which I felt uh, as a possibility. Um, but yes, there you can see from these grade lines, there's a significant. Uh, it, it's basically a ledge drop off. Um, and that, that's sort of another argument. The people on the, the travel way will be lower looking up. And so if we're talking about, I, I believe that the existing encroachment is about seven feet, seven or eight feet. We're asking for 12 feet. I don't believe that there will be any perceivable change in encroachment uh, if we're talking about plus or minus five feet from the people on the travel way down looking up. Just for point of clarity, on, on this view here, uh, the street, the road is uh, toward the bottom of the, the drawing. That's correct. So that's the orientation. Yes. Okay. The front. So yeah, the front and it's a, it's, a, it's a front porch to, you know, the goal is to soften the structure. If we look at, um, if we look at the existing photographs, uh, you know, we can see... Uh, an elevated first <coughs> floor, a solid first floor, a solid second floor. This is quite imposing to look at. It's almost as if you were in a city, you know, walking down a street with very high facades on either end. Our goal is to soften that with uh, bringing the roof lines down and, and making it, you know, front porch. And so it's sort of a... Uh, uh, um, the, the the language escapes me. I'm sorry, but but a but a a natural progression, sort of into a structure, rather which is more in keeping with the with the neighborhood, versus a, a, a one and a half two story facade that's sort of in opposition to you. So I continue with uh, the questions here. Uh, so we've got the new variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property, and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. And you answered that, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. No, I think it'll, I think it'll actually, I mean, I, I can't speak to it, so I'll say no, it will not. Uh, but um, the intent will be that it's favorable as 
we'll be removing structures from abutting properties, we'll be reducing encroachments into side yard setbacks, and we're going to be fo the goal is to focus the burden on the front yard setback, which because, as I stated earlier, of the unique circumstance between the travel way <coughs> and the current road width requirements can handle this encroachment. And the uh, practical difficulty is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Um, that's I, I'm No, this house has existed for 100 years and, um, uh, it, you know, it predates modern zoning, so no. And the question that Mr. Longstead is bringing up is no other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except a variance. That statement would be true in order to do what you're trying to accomplish. Yes. Unless we want to decrease, pri unless we want to decrease conditions which existed at the time of the purchase of the property, unless we want to decrease the privacy, uh, the perception of privacy to the abutters, unless we want to decrease the number of modern, uh, mature trees that exist on the property unless we want to decrease the uh, the yard which existed which I contend are all reasonable expectations of a property such as this then there's no reasonable alternative. And the grading of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties? Yes, uh, more nearly certainly. The, the argument is to reduce the encroachments on multiple setbacks and focus them on one setback which because of a unique relationship can can better handle that encroachment. And the granting variance will not have an adverse uh, effect on the natural environment. And I think it's obvious you're trying to protect that. Yes. Uh, you're not in the shoreland zone. Uh, no. And that should cover those items. Um, I can't remember if we any others on this. We did this. not. Can I open public hearing on this. And I'll close public hearing on this. I don't see anybody running in. Uh, come back to the board for questions, comments, or a motion. So basically, you're looking, by what you're telling us from what I'm hearing, is you're looking to protect the abutters' privacy and, and give them the right to have privacy by, by doing what you're doing. You can clearly build within the lot, but you're doing that to try to appease everybody around you. That's correct. We're at a disadvantage because this this le this uh, lot is about 13,000 square feet, where the minimum requirement for this zone is 20,000 square feet. So we're at a 7,000 uh, square foot deficiency. So if we want to if we want to allow to exist everything which is reasonably expected and existed at the time of purchase in that privacy mature trees and lawn, then yes, we need the variance to rebuild the house, uh, burdening the front yard setback. And have you talked to any of the butters about if you had to go and remove trees or anything? Have you had any, any of those conversations? We have had those conversations, although it's, you know, apparently we don't have any comments on record, so I'm, I don't, I can tell you that we did speak to a butters, but I, I don't want to speak for them. If that makes any sense. Well, I'd just like to know if it was, if, if you can't say for them, but if your opinion was that you felt that it was. My opinion is that they are in favor of it. Leaving the trees. Leaving the trees beca because these structures exist so close to the rear yard setback. Okay. So any, 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 any. So that's why you're just trying to come out of the building envelope even though there is one. Exactly. We're trying, we're trying to unburden the neighbor you know, get the, get the structure off his land, get the structure out of his setback, keep structures out of their setback, keep structures out of their setback, because the road is only 14 feet wide and the road width requirement is 66 feet, and because of the natural topography of the land, we have, you know, we'd like to burden, unfortunately we have to burden someone, so let's burden the front yard setback. I'm fine with that. Now is that is that a private road? That is a private road, isn't it? It's a private road, but be, be, I I don't know. But be, I know it's a private road. <coughs> I don't know the following because they uh, enjoy city services. They are required to uh, conform to certain to, to have certain requirements. I, I believe maybe Brian can speak better to that. 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch the question. Was the road a private road? Yes. Okay. And because of the, the reason they have to apply, the reason why these apply are because private roads are treated just like regular roads. So the reason why is it's a, whether it's private or not, it still has to meet the same setbacks. You still have the same setbacks. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And just speaking to that, um, I forgot about this part because uh, we so, I was so rushed in getting here. But uh, uh, the, the lot is 35% smaller uh, than required or 7,000 square feet. What we're asking for, the 12-foot reduction in the front yard setback in terms of, in terms of if, if we added 12 feet, to this front yard property line across the whole width would be about 1,200 square feet to the overall property. And it would add about 800 square feet, this 12 foot by, um, you know, whatever the, the, the legal building envelope adds about 800 square feet. So we're, we're not even asking for half of the 7,000 square foot deficiency. We're asking more in the nature of, you know, one quarter to, to, to one fifth of that. So it's de minimis. What you're trying to get out is it's de minimis? Yes, yeah. Okay. Have you explored other building designs that would maybe be a little bit wider and not quite as deep, given the same square footage, without and, and yet that will allow them to push back and be within the envelope? The, uh, <coughs> no, we haven't. I wish I was a little more untrustworthy but no we haven't <laughs> we, we haven't explored that um, the the real issue is that you know uh, and and this is this does not this does this has no this is not this existed at the time of purchase so I can't really speak to it however the tree the, the trees that exist that they have no control over the the sunniest part of the land is sort of in this region here uh, you can see it here. Sure. And so they would very much like a patio there. So we, we didn't explore options of a wider, shallower structure because we want to, you know, I mean, it's going to be a year-round house, but the reality is it's going to be a three-season house. And as such, they'd really very much like to enjoy uh, outside space. Hey, the honesty is refreshing. Um, I, ho I hope so. <laughs> just, just, um, the way that the proposed house sits on the lot, the, the, the new structure, how much room is, is, is there between the side of the house and, and the setback, the legal setback? Are we talking about this side? Yes. There's 15 to 20 feet, okay. which currently exists. I mean, that was the real goal. Focus, I mean, the, you know that the the house was built here for a reason, and let's not sort of do that in a, a disservice by completely reinventing the wheel. And maybe maybe that was the wrong approach, but this is where it's existed. This is where the homeowner's comfortable with existing. It's a lot easy to it's very easy to understand. The sunlight comes in this direction in the morning. The sunlight comes in this direction in the evening. You know, let's not mess with what they know. I, I think that one of the things that I, I'm struggling with here is that is number four is there no other feasible alternative that's available to the applicant except this, this particular variance. I'm trying to understand why there's no possible way that you could restructure the building and still get the square footage and, and get everything that they want and be within the envelope. Sure, uh, that's completely reasonable. But however, there's also a um, and and I'd, I by no means mean to. Um, uh, there, there's also a condition which is that the, the, um, the, 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 I believe there's a condition that the house will exist sort of in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. And the rest of the neighborhood enjoy, you know, we can see from this, the, you know, the rest of the neighborhood, uh, they enjoy skinny long houses. You, you know, there's a, there's a certain vernacular uh, and aesthetic which exists in the neighborhood which we don't really want to buck. And there are reasonable expectations you have when you purchase a property um, to, you know, a sunny lawn exists. And uh, Brian can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the state has said that uh, upon review, um, 
that's a little bit onerous to expect a homeowner to purchase a property and say, well, this structure exists outside of the building envelope. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with it if I want to do any major renovations to this. So I don't disagree with you. However, I think that there are realities which exist in, in, you know, in a practical nature. Well, one of the things we really don't look at, and I mean, it's great that you're talking about the sunlight and use of that, but if it can fit, that's really not, really not something we can consider as far as a, a rule in making decision. We need to look at it and see if it fits. I mean, if, if they don't have the sunlight they want, that doesn't necessarily. How, however, the the following condition is that the the um, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. Is is all is all I respectfully would say to that. But my kind of take on this is we're 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 solving two problems and diminish 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 help. <laughs> Uh, minimizing. minimizing. It, we're still having a de minimis effect on on that strip. If you look at the picture again, normally, you know, it, it is a unique piece of property. It's a unique part of the world. Um, I don't know what views are taken away or not taken away by moving it into different locations. I don't even believe this house has views. No, there are no views. But I don't know about the people up and back. Um, not that that's relevant, but. Obviously, nobody's complaining, so that says something. Um, my my argument when I look at the picture, the way Brian has the one that has the yeah, this one there. And I, okay. If you look at the, the 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 in essence the triangle that's cutting into the area, you, the impact is relatively mild, relatively speaking, and it's also it's a porch, and I know this is reaching, but it's coming. One of the arguments in the Higgins Beach area was that we don't count the porches in that, if I remember correctly, in the setbacks. Is that right? In the Higgins Beach code, the porches are allowed to approach into the setback. Now, that's not the case in this area. That's but, true. But it is on record that we are looking at other areas. Mm -hmm. point then With all due respect, you're reaching. <laughs> I think you're bringing up a good point. I think you're bringing up, up an excellent point. I think Pine Point and Proud Snack are the next two areas that they're going to take a look at to change the uh, uh, the zoning regulations. I, with all due respect, Proud Snack will probably never be looked at. Pine Point maybe, but probably not Proud Snack. There's not enough. There's not enough um, cohesiveness in the, the structural designs of Prouts Neck. There are some, the long skinny houses. Maybe you can make an argument for that, but they're all very unique structures. I think you'd have to admit that. Correct. I'd admit that they're all unique structures, and virtually every one I come before you on. <laughs> and you get the most uniquest of the bunch. Um, <laughs> But but no, I mean, I, I I get what you're saying and everything, but I would not I would I would be reticent if I didn't warn the board that that's probably not an applicable argument here in Prouts Neck, as it, it it's it's a point to raise, but it's not applicable to Prouts Neck because that zoning doesn't exist here, and it probably will never exist here. Fair enough. But I mean, the argument could be made that it's a non-conforming lot on record, which does not meet minimum. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. all of those things are finding. Those are actually findings of fact that the the lot is non-conforming with regard to size. And I think that's where where the board really needs to go. It's back to the findings of fact and conclusions of law. So, what are the facts? You know, focus on that, and then from those facts, draw your conclusions of law that would support your decision, whatever that may be. Um, but I think by saying, well, Higgins Beach has this, that's that's not... That's like saying that... Uh, you know, like well, New York might have that, too. Does that... I mean, yeah. What does that mean to this? I had the impression that they were going to be changing. Yeah, but even if but they were, it's nope. not there now. That is true, but we talked about that in Higgins Beach issues. We actually 
behaved in that be in that manner when we looked at Well, the yes, we, we considered that, but that was when we but were liter the, we were literally in the process right. of changing. And if that's on the case, if that's on the yeah. table, I you know I respect that. So yeah, it's good to know. That's all I say. Um I make a motion to accept the the uh, appeal as presented. Now, second for discussion. Uh, so, uh, on discussion, it's just on the table for discussion at this point on the motion. So, I I, I think Ed and I are in the same place. Whereas this is so minor and the advantages are so much greater. We're getting a piece of property that number one has doesn't even. It has property. It has a building on a piece of property it doesn't even own, and it's totally off the side. I think the improvements are phenomenal. The location that it's set, I just think it's de minimis. I, I think the the under if this were in a development that were laid out, uh, gone to the planning board, designed uh, like like uh, Pleasant Hill. The conversation to me would be very different than a hundred and some odd year old house sitting on a pile of rock. And that's kind of where I'm looking at. I'm also assuming this is all ledge up there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that, that all takes into consideration, you know, I'm noticing the optional basement access. That's going to be some blasting, I'm assuming, if that goes forward. Yeah, and it would be minim minimal at that. You know, we're trying to utilize, I mean, this, this whole region right here, I don't know if it printed on your plans, but th I mean, this is alleged facade, basically, you know, and the, the goal is to try and utilize this hollow, which we hope exists in the ledge, to allow for some, uh, I, I don't even think we'll get a car down there, but for some bicycle storage, some kayak storage, you know, the grill, throw the grill in there, that kind of stuff. The other argument I would make is that Again, I think I, I can't debate um, before the practical difficulties. I, I'm sorry, uh, no other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except a variance. Uh, there are other feasible alternatives, uh, but at what price? And that's the hard part. And that's why I asked the first question about how deep the property, how deep the building is. In other words, if the building is <coughs> 62 feet deep that's currently there, and the new building's 70 feet, uh, that would be helpful to know. Um, do you know what those are? <coughs> I, I don't. I'm sorry. Not, I, I mean, I, I don't want to speak to it. it. Because the rotation has changed, I mean, all, all I can say is that they are very comparable. And although we might be infringing a little bit more uh, in the, in this region, you know, to a, to a matter of no more than five feet, we're holding to the other side, which is the side with the, you know, with the existing lawn. I mean, I mean, the lawn isn't the issue. I, I like the fact of the trees. I like the fact that that that's an area that has been protected by accident, by whatever reasons, uh, over the years. Uh, those setbacks weren't there when this house was built. They just weren't there. And so now we're turning it. We're making it more in compliance. Um, I mean, the, ha the, the, the proposed house has to be, it, it has to be a little bit deeper by a few feet because we're nixing this wing right here. And we're talking about an existing footprint, which is 1,400 square feet, and our proposed footprint, which is, you know, 1,500 square feet, 1,600 square feet. We were picking up a little bit of that increased footage in the front, but in all honesty, there has to be, and I apologize for not having this information ready, but there has to be a little bit of increase in the back. But the reality is, in terms of perception, it's going to be the same. In my opinion, it's going to be the same. Mr. Chair, normally I would say no. Feasible alternative, there is one. Um, with this one, they've talked to the neighbors. The neighbors seem to be leaning towards, obviously, you didn't give us an answer, but... Well, the town sent letters to Yeah, they seem to be leaning towards keeping that buffer 
with the trees and stuff and wanting it to be built the way that it's being presented. Normally, I would say there's a feasible alternative. You gotta go back. You gotta just do what you gotta do. But we always look at what neighbors are asking or coming before us for as well. Remember, though, we still had to get over the findings of fact right. on a position. So if we're going to take the position of number four being no other feasible alternative, it, I wish we had more information. Um, I had, I, I'm kind of of that mindset. Well, I, I like the design. I, I think it is a, it fits with the neighborhood. I like everything about the project. My only concern is that that number four is one of those things that if we open that door mm -hmm. on this one, what happens in the future? Uh, if we're going to open the door, we have to have a real good justification as to why we did it. Can I, am I allowed to talk? Or? Feel free. Do you th I mean, is the justification not that we're effectively not not we're, we're not just no further burden on abutters, but we're actually unburdening un, uh, abutters. Each each of the items have to stand on their own. Okay. So if you if we go through just for the sake of discussion, let's carry through the finding of facts and, and conclusions of law. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property, and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. I think you've established that. The so non-conforming lot sitting off. There's a bunch of issues, yep. and, and so that makes sense. And that I don't think anybody would have a problem with. The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the mar use or the fair market value of the abutting properties. Obviously, if anything, it's going to increase the value of the properties. Um, and to positive Mr. University. Crockett, you know, nobody's, I mean, granted, no, I'm not going to say that part, but nobody spoke in, in opposition to it. And the practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant prior owner. So we're okay. I'm going to skip number four. The granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. I think that's relatively straightforward. And again, you've addressed it. And I think from that meets that requirement. The property is not in the flood zone. Then you come to, uh, uh, it won't have a, this, this is where I think the argument for number four being overridden is legitimate. The granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. And d depending on the damage of taking down mature trees that are in an area that has been around for hundreds of years and really that is a, it's, a, it's, it's, its own ecosystem. Um, can, can I just point out, we are, I mean, this is not, we, we have designed this to not take down any trees. I mean, there's a couple of dead trees that we're going to take down in the front yard, but in terms of these, in terms of this system uh, of trees, we're not, the plan is to not remove any, uh, and, and that the homeowner has been explicit in that. Is there any way to get us any additional information as to if you did put it in the footprint, what the adverse effect would be? More details on that. I mean, oh, sure. I mean, you. We. I'm ha happy to provide a drawing where the tree exists in this and is impacting. You know, it's. it's I mean, you can see right here the tree is on the back of the house, which you know, this drawing from the survey is not necessarily accurate. You know, I mean, the the, the tree is actually much larger because it's from the aerial photograph. It's impacting the back of the house. The 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 general school of thought is that the the line of foliage is the line of root system and if you start to drive over that with construction if you start to dig into that you're going to significantly injure the tree to a point of possibly killing it so uh i'm happy to provide a drawing where this this structure exists entirely within the setback and you'll see the significant in, you know impact to this mature is that pine? I, think, I think that was they're all pine no, this is a this is a hardwood. It's deciduous, really. Yeah, it's some kind of elm. I'm I'm not a arborist. It's well, some kind of elm or oak or something. To be honest, to be honest with you, if <laughs> looking at it from an insurance perspective, because that's what I do. If it's sitting on the top, the insurance company would want them to take it down anyway. If it's sitting on the house, or trim it back. Well, we don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a motion on the on the table right now. Um, Could we? 
Could we table for more information? And has a second. Could we condi conditionally approve it? No. No. Oh, okay. Uh, what we can do is if you, uh, the, the one thing that we could do is that if you wanted to pull back and I wanted to pull back and have them come back next month with a, a the prop, I would argue the proper drawings of, of the existing property sitting on a, a easy to read uh, plan and then the new one and comparing those, that would be something. Um, my personal opinion is that the least damage we can do to the impact of the, the, the trees up there, the better. I think that it's high, it's out of the way. It's the, foot, the setback, again, is the requirement of that area, but it's almost capricious. It's, it's, it's just, the, it's a rule that is there, but it doesn't meet a purpose in this case for me. Again, you take the same piece of property, you put it in Pleasant Hills, totally different conversation. Because that's a designed property, which came through the planning board, went through, you take it to any other neighborhood, including mine. All of those are designed. This is a building that's been there for some 100 years, I, I don't, I think the, the keeping the, the more stable we keep the look and the feel of that area, because I do believe it's its own ecosystem. I don't mean that necessarily environmentally, but just from a, from a um, aesthetics point of view. I personally think that six overrides four, and that's why I'm comfortable with it. I think we just have to be very careful with that, and it would be helpful to have more information so we can completely justify that if we do go in that direction because this is always one that we struggle with and it's always one that gives us challenges. So, uh, Mr. Chair, um, and I agree with uh, most of the comments that are being said regarding this, uh, regarding for or letter G in the, uh, uh, the application, uh, is there no feasible alternative available to you except the variance? Uh, I would like to see um, that by shifting the house in any direction, you would put at risk uh, letter I or number six, um, having an unreasonable adverse effect on the natural resources. Uh, and additionally, I think that that indirectly ties in with number two or letter E, uh, the granting of the variance will have an unreasonable detrimental effect on either use of the fair market value of the budding properties. Um, I think that mm -hmm. uh, by removing the vegetation, you would cause uh, you may cause or have the potential to cause a uh, detrimental effect on the value of an abutting property if that was there before that they were expecting as part of the value and character of the house that's already there. Um, so those are my thoughts. It, it would be nice to see more uh, for letter f number four, letter G, um, you would put at risk uh, the, uh, the projecting of vegetation and um, and then, like I said, inadvertently affecting letter E as well. Uh, per the standard rules, even though there is a motion on the table, uh, any board member at any time can ask for a tabling. Um, I, would, I would request that we But that's, that's, again, up to, for and with a specific reason spelled out so that the applicant can know what he's dealing with. Uh, we need a second on that, and that's not debatable. Um, I'll, um, did you just move on that? Yeah. I'll then I will second that. Yeah, I, I need some further clarification as to what the request is. Uh, what I, I think I was clear with my request when I, I said that I'd like to see what a, a drawing of the adverse effect as to what it would show so that we can clearly define this and look at it and see if it's going to have an adverse effect on the environment and if it's going to have an adverse effect on other, other property values and, and kind of see what we're what we're looking at in the footprint and what you've presented. What you've presented is, is good and you're trying to keep things in line, taking into account the neighbors and everything else, but I think I'd like to table it based upon the fact of getting more defined drawings. So, I mean, we can't just, uh, you know, in all honesty, one of the functions of my company is that we start and finish in nine months. So, um, you know, we can't just, maybe for better clarification, you know, if we kind of extrapolate that, you know, this pencil mark exists, the 12 foot, you know, we carry it over here, I mean, we're, we're losing about 30% of the tree. And th that's what you're looking for? I think what I'm, what I'm hearing is we need to, what you're asking for is a drawing, laying it out in the footprint, and laying it out as it sits. So that, the, and right. then, then marking the trees 
appropriate. Like, for instance, we know that, <coughs> for instance, I'm surprised it's deciduous. I would have thought it would be um, uh, evergreen. And evergreen rides across the top. Jim, maybe, maybe an arborist's opinion of the impact of the structure if it were moved 12 feet closer? I think that would be a very good, very good know, argument. I think what you guys need to do is quantify what the information is missing that you need to know so that Trevor can come back with that. I'd just like to make one comment. I mean, we're, we're talking about setbacks in existing zoning regulations that weren't in effect 100 years ago when this whole community was laid out. If you walk down that road, I'm sure you're going to see a bunch of houses that are no ways near in compliance with setbacks. And here we're arguing over a 12-foot little bit area and, and what he's trying to do is he's, he's trying to move a house off somebody else's lot, put it in, a, in an area that's all cleared out, don't mess with the vegetation. Okay, he's got to come 12 foot forward. So what? There's not going to be any different than anything else in there. Mr. But you could use the same argument. If it's only 12 feet, then why can't he move it back? If it's so de minimis, why can't he move it back? You guys are you guys are making all kinds of arguments for why it can exist out of the footprint. The same argue, arguments could be made for why it can't be in the footprint. Why, so, so Brian? If I took thirty percent out of you, I don't think you'd still exist. Well, I want to see. I think what the board is asking for is show us that you're not that we don't trust you. You're a very you smart guy. Shouldn't. But you admitted you're not an arborist. How do we know the root system is going to suffer when the, the building is moved? So that it's going to kill the tree. You know, bring us some facts. That's what's missing. I think, I think that, that's, for instance, the issue with the tree I brought up. The reason why I thought, because of the, the, uh, the, the ledge, it would be reasonable to assume that those are pines. Pines, the, the root system is on top. Deciduous, they're deep. So the likelihood of that tree having an impact by moving it back is very low because the trees go down, the, the roots go down deep. Whereas the pine, it would sit up high. You could do a lot of damage there. But that surprised me. That would be a lot easier argument to make that case if that were, if that were the case. So, so that's a little, nobody's fault. I mean, it's just, it's just the reality is that it would have been an easier argument for me to say that probably will take, will take that tree out. Mr. Blaze, I, I, I totally agree with you. In fact, I wouldn't, if it was a common sense rule that we need to deal with, I would say that there's no issue with this at all. The problem is, is that we do have to deal with further further cases that come before us and could end up in court and they can come back to this case and say, well, how did you justify that? Because we want significantly the same type of thing. So we have to justify why we were able to, to go ahead with this appeal and, and allow the appeal by, and still keep ourselves out of court uh, from other cases in the future. So that's that's my only concern with this. I I like I like the design of the house. I think what he's doing is moving it and everything. I think it's the right thing to do, and I think it would look terrific there. But I'm, I'm concerned with without the toward the right justification on it. Um, I'm concerned with lawsuits in the future. And I'm happy to provide further documentation. However, I mean a 35 percent reduction in the legal. Pro, you know, in the in the lot size versus what is legally acceptable. I mean, that's that's significant. A 35 percent, you know, 7,000 square feet. We're missing. Right now, we've got a uh, motion on the table with a second. We've got a request for a tabling without a second. And I've asked. No, no, there was a second. Then there's no more discussion. All in favor of tabling. Discussion is not eligible on the table, the table. So, all in favor of table? One, two, three. Opposed? One, two. It's uh, being tabled. So, uh, and just so the audience understands, and so you understand, sir, uh, table is not up for discussion. And since it's been uh, tabled, uh, since I request the table and a second was placed in forward, that ends the, the debate. And so it. Uh, I did try to solve that, but they failed. So <laughs> they <laughs> can't win them all. <laughs> so um, the the issue at hand, the best I could give you for advice is uh, 
justification as to why, number one, the design couldn't be a little bit different, whether that porch could be shortened up, whether or not uh, the drawings, I, 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 as you know, did not like the the plot plan. Uh, to me, that didn't what I expected to see for a plot. I mean, to me, that's a plot plan, not not this. So, if I, I, I couldn't, were going to, I, if I I, it's just a full bl blueprint. Okay. So if if I can interpret. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In, like interior. You want to see interior walls? Ex exterior uh, it's, um, elevations. Elevations. Like grade elevations? It, it, it's just a term. I mean, it basically, it lays out the property and how it sits on the lot and defines it better. Um, a scale drawing showing uh, everything around it's, it. It's called elevations, but it really well, is. We ought to have a survey. There ought to be a survey, right? There should be. I mean, it's not marked. We ought to have a survey. This is, this is a survey. Did you reference a survey on there? I mean, was that provided, was that based on some plan survey? Survey performed on 14 November 2011 by Owen Haskell. There you go. The, the he'll know what to do. There you go. The, this the, is, well, well, I mean, that, that does. This suffice. is what he did. I think what the board is asking for is a little more information on that and maybe a full size, you know, instead of splitting that up with the photo, make it a little bigger so everything's a little clearer for them. You can't, you can't see on there exactly where the house is over. Yeah. Over the line. Or which the setback mean? lines didn't show up. Ed's right. They didn't show up. Oh, they didn't print. They, they didn't oh, okay. Up. I apologize. They're there. They're very ghosted. You can't really okay. see it out. Okay. I apologize. And I didn't I realize that. Mark had at, if, 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 uh, sorry, I don't want to talk. No. I think what Mark was referring to earlier was that it would be maybe easier to show the existing house and how that sits with those darker areas and then show another view with the proposed house it's a little confusing to them. They're not getting the full effect of how the existing house sits versus how the new house is proposed to sit. I think you're trying to show all that in one view, and it might be clearer in two. Okay. I think they'd also like to see the difference between the proposed square footage of the footprint mm -hmm. and the existing square footage of the footprint. And, not and just some foot dimensions, dimensions from dimensional. the structure to the property line, Correct. from the structure to the tree that needs to be saved. To the setback. Uh, it, it, that kind of stuff. You might also, I was, if, ahead, if the chair doesn't mind, <laughs> do you know anything about the, the property behind it, that house, is that a newer house? Is that an older house? Is that anything you've ever had, your company's ever had anything to do with? Unfortunately, no. It was done in the 90s, so... It, it, but it has been redone? Uh, the, this addition was done, yes. Okay. It was added to in the early 90s, I believe. I, I didn't sure check the record on that one, so I, I don't... was on the picture? The, I believe it was this section that was added to in the 90s, the early 90s, based on the construction. Well, that looks really close to the property line, It, it, it? does, <laughs> and, and I think that may be worth investigating, too. They maybe didn't respect... I, I did not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by that much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but here's my point, and, and, and here's a, a point I'd like to make with the chair's indulgence, okay. is that if you were going to preserve the existing building and maybe try to reduce some of those... Um, as you call them, burden on the other property, the, the encroachment onto the other property, and, and so on and so forth. I think there, there can be a lot of arguments made to help you do those kinds of things. The minute you wipe something off the face of the earth and start new, you have a clean slate, a clean palette, if you will. And yes, it might be expensive to blast ledge, and it might take up some of the yard areas, and it may encroach on some vegetation. But I'd be interested in an arborist's opinion one way or the other. If can we trim certain limbs and open that up and get the, get the vegetation away from the house when it's moved into a compliant position? Um, I'd be interested to know, is there a root system there? What would the impact be on that? Not, not is there, but what would the I impact be on that root system? Would it kill the tree? What are the chances of it killing the tree? Is there a design, a building design, or a change in that building design that would accommodate that, still preserves most of that vegetation? I think it's unrealistic to expect to preserve all of it. 
you're starting over with a new structure. The expectation is that now you can make that compliant. Clearly there's a building window there. I understand vegetation and other things are in the way. I understand that's not what they purchased, but it's not. It, they're the ones making the decision to tear the building down and relocate it. The burden must be on the applicant to show why they can't do it in a compliant way. I'm not saying the board can't approve it. You just there's just not enough proof. I think I, I agree with everything you said except for they're not really making the decision. You know, they bought a house that has existed with deferred maintenance for many years and it's cost prohibitive to I mean we we How can long have they owned it? a year. You know, I mean, not, I, I don't know, you know, plus or minus six months, you, you know, I mean. They didn't inspect the property before they bought it. They did, but, I mean, Brian, that, you know, that's, that's unrealistic. I have to ask. You can, you, and you certainly can, but it's, you know, it's unrealistic, you know, over, you know how these things go, like over stop, time. I'd like to stop it right here. Here's another thing you might want to give some serious thoughts about is look at side setbacks as opposed to front, getting a limited reduction of yard size rather than, rather than a, a practical difficulty variance. Yeah, we can't, I don't believe we. No, okay, no. No. Yeah. There was there was one very similar to this, and I can't remember oh. if it was a couple months ago or three or four months ago. And what they did is they came in with the two sets of plans. That was very helpful for us. One showing it as it sits right now, and one showing the new plan if it was in the envelope where it was. And they kind of overlapped each other so we could actually see where it was. And um, Mr. Longstaff's comment about the determination from an arborist too. I mean, that would be great. We need to back up our decisions. We need to have justification as to why we're doing something. If we're going to go and say this overrides this, we need to have as much justification as possible to do that. And Number the more information simple. you can give us, the better. Number four is simple. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. And then we're going to leave it there. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, so we're we'll stopping it there. Sorry, it's been tabled. It's been tabled. Do you have enough? guidance on what kind of information the board would like to do when you come back. I think so. That's important. Okay. Yeah. And That's what I was trying to elaborate. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Have anything else? Uh, Any comments? Any board comments? Anybody comments? I, I like Brian's idea of an email next. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Does the board feel like a, a, a refresher from Phil Saucier, town's attorney, on just some, I, I know there's been some questions raised from some of the newer members, especially about what's our role in enforcement of conditions that we place on approvals, um, how much leeway do we have in, in different areas. Would a brief refresher be a good idea? Perhaps <coughs> next, won't hurt us. next month, would if I get that together, maybe you won't be here. meet a, an hour an hour earlier. James will be there. I'll try to bring food. I just won't be here yeah. next month. Yeah, I, like you. I told you you could bring your wife. It's I know. A I know. No, it's it's it'd be a great fifth anniversary. <laughs> I know it would be. I, but, uh, I think it's a great idea because I would love to know what the enforcement October. is with some of these things. Because some of these things we approve, and I drive by on a daily basis, and I look at them, and I'm going, this isn't what was approved. And I know you guys have limited powers and Well, manpower. I'd like to know, you know, when you see that happen, I wish you'd let me know. Well, I think we did with Which one, with the restaurant. Yeah, okay. Uh, a few of us we can talk right about now. that if the board wants to talk about that. We can talk about that. Off, in, yeah. in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, oh, you send me your over. suggestions of <clears throat> what you'd like Phil to address. Okay. That would help because we'll only give him an hour or, or, or whatever you feel is appropriate. But I think a lot of questions can get asked and answered in an hour, um, and it would be good to have that legal um, perspective. Too many so I'd like to have a request to do this in October. Uh, I know it's in October. Because this way we get sure. new members sure. on here. Great. And the only thing I, I caution is if October looks like it gets loaded up with another six, K, although we handled them we, very, very we, well. We haven't done that. We, what we can do is we can deal with the realities of what we have. Okay. But in that matter, if we're doing it before 7 anyway, it's not going to affect yep. the end of the okay. So we'll, I'll, uh, I'll put that down for October, and we'll put something together for that. And in the meantime, feel free to send me suggestions of what you'd like more information on or like Phil to come prepared to speak to me about. Um, so October. Thanks, Brian. Um, do you want to talk about Bailey's uh, now or offline? Well, I think if we're going to talk about Bailey's, I think it should be online. 
in we've, public. We've had everything else online. So okay. Yeah, I think so, so, so there was apparently, I was not here the last meeting, and, apparent, and, and I know the meeting before it was brought up. And here's the take on that. Uh, the only thing they've done, and I believe it was in place, I think, I think Mr. Frank may have misspoken, uh, that, that electrical conduit was already in. That was already operational at the time he came in. I, I didn't bother to, I didn't know that for certain, but I suspected that it was. So what they did is they plugged some lights in for the, the canopy. Your decision, going back to the meeting, minutes. Mr. Stark moved to approve appeal number 2573 with the following conditions. A temporary canopy for seasonal use may be placed on the new pavement from May 1 until September 30 and must be securely anchored. This approval does not include the placement of a tent with sidewalls that enclose the space. Number two, the electric and water utility lines shall not be connected or placed in service since they were not permitted or inspected. No exist and number three, no existing non-conforming use on the property shall be enlarged, extended, expanded, or converted without approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals. The simple fact of running an electrical line is not an expansion or enlargement or extension of the nonconforming. Uh, however, I think, and I want to speak for Mr. Stark, but how I understood that to mean was that was the 15-yard penalty. In other words, we're but taking... That's not what you said. Th uh, it said because it was not permitted or inspected. We did an after-the-fact permit and inspection on that yeah. line and approved it to be there. Not the gas line, not the sewer line, not the water line, no other utility. Because those would be used for possible cooking. Right. Can, um, we, can we, for just to clarify, because I think I, I know that, that uh, Karen's in the same think, thinking that I was. Because I actually came in, I, I was surprised that they had given it. And I think you're correct from the rules, I would agree. I'd love to hear the actual tape, not, not hear it, but see the, yeah. the, the actual language because that's obviously that's an abridged version I, and if that's how we did it we meant, I know my intent was to say I want a penalty we, we had some discussion on it we, we oh. specifically talked about that there there wouldn't be any electrical or water and so but it was already there it, it we was said there that it wouldn't and be they told up. us that it was there they said that the lights were run but they were not hooked up and they were not going to be hooked up I think and, that was wrong and they were well that that was the intent of our intent and the way that we discussed it was that that would not be used. And I think that we so need to have you it. would prohibit them from running electrical anywhere in their on their property, like without like Chairman zoning Maroon, board. Like Chairman Maroon just said, that was kind of kind of their penalty for for all this stuff that they did without any permits. That was kind of us saying, all right, we're going to let you get away with this, but you hook up anything else, you got to come back for permits, and you got to come to us. They came the back for permits to us for permits. You I guys, think we, I think we permits. specifically said that they had to come back to this board for permission, didn't, it, didn't we? For well, you, the only thing they can come back to the board for is another expansion or extension or or conversion of an unconforming use or okay. another variance. Well, well uh, you, if we could get the transcript of, of that, that I'd be, be happy to do that. But I think I think this is this is very clear to me. This is very clear to me. They could turn around the next day and apply for an electrical permit to run a conduit out to that thing and do the very same thing, but they wouldn't use the one that they already installed because you guys didn't want them to. I, I guess the question would be, would we have allowed what they even got based on that? Would we have come back and said no on the whole thing if we were going to and, and retract what they were given? Because they, what they did is they took, the, they took A and, and then explained extrapolated that and we're saying well, well, well wait a minute this is what you told us you're going to do here's what you ended up doing had we known that we probably would have given it to you but the truth is you didn't give us all the information and then took more so rather than penalizing you completely and taking that away altogether then we'll leave it at this but we don't want you doing anything else if you want to come back and talk to us look us in the eye I think that was the intent. Now, it may not be legally what the result is, but I think that was the intent of the people who made the motions. I, I don't know that, and I don't know the results of the legal side of that. But I'm I not even sure that you have the authority to do that. We may not. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I think it... You that, may know what you want to do. 
And but, what you want to do may be fine, but I don't believe that you have the legal authority to do well, it. And that's what, that's what the Superior Court's for. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think uh, the intent, again, I don't know what it said on record. I don't know, what, I don't remember. I went by this and we issued the after the fact permit. I get that permit. totally and I, and I respect how you handled it uh, and I'm okay with that. However, I do believe that what Karen was talking about is exactly what Jim's talking about. Um, and what... You guys can go each individually or as a group go back and watch the videotape from that meeting if you want to review what the I think the discussion. easiest thing is just to, to get a transcript it's, or email it to us or whatever. I'm, I will, but I'm not sure. I think the real issue here is um, how we... If we have to, to get more specific in our terminology, I can get where you may have heard one thing versus another. If you've read that a month it later... Wasn't, it wasn't what I heard. I'm going by the written document. Okay. But the written document... I, I don't remember legal. what I heard. There was a lot of stuff said that night. Right. I went by the written... That's, the why, that's why reviewing the minutes and approving the minutes is not just a cursory thing that you do. You should be very clear when you read those minutes and approve them. They should reflect what you actually thought they yeah. were supposed to say. But I think what you're seeing is that I read it exactly the way I heard, heard it. You I read it you exactly read it way you the way heard. you wanted to hear it. I'm and not think, sure that's the way it actually. But I think wanted. that's what you said. What you did also. And I'm not looking to blame. I'm not. That's not my goal here. My goal here is to point out the reality is that at least three of us disagree. Now, let me just ask a theoretical, if I might. Sure. What, what is the problem? The problem was that the continuous... Uh, the lights are hanging from a canopy. What is... Is that... On, you, I mean, on the issue... I'm not quite sure what's going on. Well, and, and you, you kind of tied to it earlier on uh, it, at, the last, at that meeting. We have got a, a pattern of behavior that is disrespectful of the town's rules. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with that one bit. And I we just, were trying to. Do I don't want to go into the philosophy of it. What is wrong with lights hanging from a canopy tent that you guys approved? We were trying to What's stop a behavior. We were just trying to stop a behavior. You think you can? Okay. Yeah. I think our thought process was that we didn't know the electrical was fully functioning. I mean, you you missed the after the fact permit. But I I think my thought philosophy on it anyways was that there would be no lights turned on or no electrical used out there, or water. But it wasn't reflected in anything that I, I could lay my hands on. There was nothing, no, none, nothing of that nature was said in the minutes. It wasn't said in the decision, in the ruling that you signed. Um, again, I, I, I so, we so can call whatever we want. Mm -hmm. How I interpret something, how you interpret something is, is, is that's why the word interpret is used. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the issue at hand is take that off the table. How do we prevent that in the future? Well, I don't know. Do a better job at the minutes and the decision. Yeah, uh, or uh, we could go the other way with that too, um, with with paying more attention to the board's needs. So I, that, I, that's why the minutes are there. But I think what you're hearing from four people now is that we all felt that that spoke to what we thought was going to happen. And our absent board member was one, the one, one of the people that actually came in and mentioned it, that she thought that there would be no electrical hooked up or anything. And it says... And she's not here, so... It says that no electrical because there were no permits or inspections. So we went back and we did the after-the-fact process, which many of you are familiar with, to get that inspected and permit. Oh, he's looking at the minutes. One more thing. I know there was some there was some strong words from the planning board on this one too that they came down. But you guys don't you guys don't have I don't believe you have that authority. Me too. Okay, you have authority to place conditions on it, but if someone applies for the permit, mm -hmm. that's a permitted use. Even if they've already even if they've already started the work. Well, that's what it's the after the fact permit. The process is that we get a, a licensed electrician to inspect and issue an affidavit stating that it was installed correctly because we didn't get a chance to see it. The, the permit is paid double the permit fees as a fine for doing the work without the permit. Okay. That's the standard process. That's the way we went about doing it. I would, if they came in today and asked for an electrical permit to run conduit to the back parking lot so that they could put an outlet out there to plug a generator or to plug cars, uh, 
block heaters or whatever, whatever use they needed it for, I would have no reason not to issue that permit. Because it's in the envelope. That one, that one wasn't. It doesn't matter what, whether it's in the envelope or not. But I mean, that, that piece was built out without approval. But you approved it. We approved it with conditions. Again, we come back. I don't want to beat this to death. Okay. No, but, I'm, but, I'm, I'm fine. You want to hear the record, so that's what we'll, we'll get for you. Thank you. Any other comments? Motion? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Now in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much.